What's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA 06 featuring that next mod of course and we are here. We are here with the year four preview. We got another excellent season of FCS football on the verge of getting started. And I hope you guys are excited for it. Not only are we going to go over the preseason top 25 poll, those all Americans that we're going to be watching out for, as well as what that initial Heisman race is going to be looking like. Of course, what some of you may also be interested in as well. We're going to see where your custom prospects ended up in their true freshman campaigns. Where do they end up signing on the dotted line? So we're going to have quite a bit in this episode. I hope you're excited for this episode as well if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button if you do happen to be brand new and the first thing that i actually wanted to go over was something that i have not really done for this series because i got a couple of questions on it um what are my sliders so i'm going to take a quick minute to show what my sliders are looking like and this is what i got going on you know six minutes on all american uh this is what uh operation sports did recommend and then as for the ai this is what i have set up for the human which uh doesn't really matter too terribly much uh this is what i have going on and then this is what i have for the cpu right so this so this is what my uh sliders are uh and i i actually like how my sliders are shaking out here right uh i really love what i got going on thought we've had some pretty good games for the most part um but if there's any changes that you want me to make uh, i can definitely consider them uh, as we move forward through this series but now the thing that y'all want to see we'll see what this ap top 25 is looking like so we start with the ap top 25 that was recently released and this is what we got going on uh the number one team in the nation they are actually going to give it to georgia southern who we saw in that national championship game they were the runners up last year uh they do bring back Ankita Woods he did return for his senior year so I'm really excited to see uh what Georgia Southern can do they're a B squad New Hampshire as the defending national champions they're number two and I thought that was really interesting that the game had them at this particular position simply because they are a team that you know did return 20 of its 22 starters their only question is that quarterback James Masson, they have one of the best special teams units in the country. They come in at number three here in this preseason AP poll. So that's already two ACC squads from the same division, by the way. Followed by North Dakota State. They're number four in this AP. Uh, they got a B-plus overall squad. Uh, we'll see if they can live up to it. They made a deeper playoff run this past season, but we'll see what happens to them. Western Carolina, they are still under NCAA sanctions, but should be a pretty good regular season team before we inevitably not see them in the playoffs. But year number five, they will be eligible for that opportunity. Southeast Missouri State, they improved their offense tremendously. They were a D-plus offensive squad last year. They're up to a C-plus, which can compete with a lot of teams in the MCS. Plus, that defense is still really darn good. At number seven, we have San Diego State, who was the number one seed in the FCS playoffs last year. They were upset in the quarterfinal by New Hampshire. Then we got number eight, and that's Southern. Now, Southern barely missed out on the playoffs last year. Uh, they were the last team out. Now they're number eight in the country, and they are going to be led by Justin Jones. Uh, Mike Hill did end up graduating, so we will see Justin Jones see former number one recruit in the year one offseason class he's finally gonna get a chance to start a quarterback number nine we got akron who made an fcs playoff appearance last year but they were crushed in the second round by north dakota state uh akron did win a first round game which i do believe was against montana texas southern is also here at number 10 they are also under one year probation same thing as western carolina they are not eligible for the ncaa tournament this upcoming season but in year number five, those sanctions will be lifted. As for Kent State, they won a couple of national championships here in this series, but they did end up losing in the, I believe it was the semifinals. They end up going to number 11 in this preseason poll. Number 12 has Eastern Kentucky. They lost in the first round, but they got a lot of good momentum in this program. They're going to definitely be competitive. 
and then rounding out the teams that i think have a realistic shot of winning the national championship this year we got sacramento state they are certainly a program on the rise they've recruited extremely well but they have not made a fcs playoffs yet in this entire series at least not right now so we're gonna have to see what sacramento state can do bare minimum they gotta make the playoffs this year this team is too talented so now we go into teams that you know not necessarily i think have a realistic shot of winning the national championship but you know should be playoff hopefuls at the very least and this might round out the top 25 we got rice at number 14 temple at number 15 they're representing for the independence youngstown state comes in at number 16 if this holds up this would be their first fcs playoff appearance they did not make the playoffs in the first three seasons of this series at number 17 we got eastern illinois they made it to the second round of the fcs playoffs before losing to georgia southern montana comes in at number 18 they made it to the playoffs last year still uh have not made it as far as they did in year number one it looks like that might not be the case either but they should be a playoff team weaver state is here as well they're under one year probation uh, that's where they currently stand as of right now so you hate to see it so smu comes in at number 20 idaho at number 21 they're in here as well uh south carolina state they come in at number 22 uh they didn't they were narrowly close to making the playoffs but no cigar for them utah state at number 23 they were representing for the WAC, their highest rated team from the WAC conference new mexico state is also in here at number 24 on top of that but then rounding out the group we got eastern michigan the eagles coming in at number 25 our teams to potentially watch out for in terms of being in the fcs playoffs you know portland state could get in there they made a late push sam houston state the cardiac cats central michigan ucf should be considered tulane eastern carolina north carolina a and t they're ranked outside the top 25 but they did make the playoffs last year followed by nicole state sanford unlv northwestern state tennessee martin so i mean you're looking through a lot of these teams right now and you know there's a lot of playoff hopefuls uh that are out there in this series that you know should at least have some consideration in terms of making it to the fcs playoffs um yeah a lot of teams uh probably half of this of uh, the teams in the league probably have some kind of hope of going to the fcs playoffs this year so as I mentioned before, we did talk about how Ikeda Woods did end up returning for his senior season. And here's a guy that is going to get a lot of attention throughout the year. You know, a team that narrowly missed out on winning the national championship last year. And there's, he is a starting quarterback that is in that Heisman watch, which of course, no surprise, he was the runner up last year. A couple of guys that you remember, Ikeda Woods definitely for sure. Now, the big thing about Ikeda Woods uh, that we're going to quickly see, I think, is we saw Albert Miniachi go to the NFL. He was a six-round draft pick uh, in the uh, you know during day number three. Uh, we're going to see if Ikeda Woods made Miniachi. Did Miniachi make Ikeda Woods, or you know, is, is his offense going to take a general step back because you know at the FCS level you don't get an NFL caliber player very often right so uh we're going to see what happens to georgia southern's offense this year if ikeda woods can handle it well that would seriously help his uh draft stock going into his senior year he's a 91 overall so the big thing is five foot six he's, he's a quarterback at five foot six um uh, do they let him try quarterback at the nfl level if he gets there or do they try to kick him out to say like a running back position or or wide receiver right uh what one those things or will high ultimately stop them from going to the nfl also in the heisman watch we got the junior wide receiver david Forn. now david Forn has been having a really excellent college career this is somebody that already has 19 touchdowns and over 2,000 receiving yards as well and six foot eight he is certainly dangerous and he's someone that could uh, be a candidate to leave early uh, to go to or at least try his uh, luck at the NFL. He's already a 91. Coming in as well at number three in the preseason Heisman watch, we got Joey Ward, the junior quarterback from New Mexico State. 
He had a really excellent sophomore season. Had over 40 passing touchdowns. Also in here as well, Jermaine Thomas, who had a really good game in the national championship. He had, you know, close to 100 yards receiving. You really do love to see that. Ends up with 1,500 yards receiving and 17 touchdowns. We'll see if he can help this new quarterback, whoever wins that quarterback battle, because there was a number one quarterback and a number one athlete that would translate well to the quarterback position. So a little quarterback battle here for New Hampshire uh, to start the season. And then rounding out the group is the senior tailback, Kenny Robinson. He was a very good running back for Kent State. Found the end zone very often. He had 20 touchdowns last year on the ground, 1,400 yards rushing. He's extremely da dangerous, and I'm excited to watch him play throughout the season. So that does take us to the All-Americans that we do have going on here. Now, of course, Ikeda Woods, he's in here as well. No surprise, he's going to be first-team All-American at the quarterback position. Then at running back, we got the junior Roderick Murray, who could not get to experience postseason action, but he is a very good running back. In his short college career, Ari's racked up close to 3,500 yards and 33 touchdowns. Only put the ball on the ground once, so he really improved how he takes care of the football. Also a decent uh, receiving threat as well. He's got a touchdown in each of his first two seasons. The junior from White Settlement, Texas, he is definitely a weapon for the Tigers. Also, someone to watch out for this year is Darren Wills, the junior from Temple. He's also going to be named first team All-American. He had 1,400 yards and 22 touchdowns back in year number three. As for the receiving core for the first team All-Americans, David Forn is in here. He's on that Heisman finalist list. But someone that's a little bit of a surprise is uh, Travis Mullins of Grambling State being in here. Now, we have not talked about Grambling State very much in this series, but Travis Mullins had a really great year, uh, even though his team did not get a lot of attention, and rightfully so, Grambling State has not made the playoffs yet. He had a really good sophomore season, 1,100... 11, 112 catches. Wow, words are so hard. 1,500 yards receiving and 14 touchdowns. That's what Travis Mullins had. So, rightfully so. Um, he also had almost 1,000 yards after the catch. So, he knows how to really break away from defenders and really uh, like create extra yardage for that offense. Also in here is Jermaine Thomas. He is the third wide receiver on this list. He is going to be listed as a first-team All-American, as well as a Heisman finalist to watch out for this upcoming season. Then we move over to tight end. We got Obi McFarlane, the junior from Eastern Kentucky. The Colonel had a really solid season, 37 catches, 650 yards, eight touchdowns, definitely established himself as a receiving threat. Not to mention when it comes down to, you know, being an offensive lineman, being a blocker, he didn't allow any sacks and, you know, even can get a few pancakes every once in a while. Speaking of those pancakes, let's talk about this offensive line real quick. James McClellan is in here. He was a all first team All-American uh, last season and they expect him to be the same this year. He is a sophomore. Also, here is true sophomore Bryant McDonald. He's a sophomore left guard for the Bison. But one of your customs does make that first team All-American list. We got Chris Black, who really great freshman season. 67 pancakes and not a single sack allowed. That is absolutely amazing. So congratulations to that custom player. Really stepping up in his true freshman season, not only as a starter, but already is one of the best offensive linemen in the country. Rounding out this offensive line group, we got Rick Nixon, who was part of that national runner-up squad, did start in the national championship game last season. And then rounding out the group is Joe Rice, the junior right tackle from New Hampshire. So New Hampshire getting a couple, actually we got two free, free guys on the offensive first team All-American list. Should be a great offense this year, regardless of who starts at quarterback. So now we jump on to the defensive side of the football. We'll start with the uh, defensive line, the Hog Mollies uh, in the trenches. We'll start with Brandon Wiggins from Southern Missouri State. He at six foot three, 251 pounds. He was a menace to opposing quarterbacks last season. 14 sacks last year. A couple of fump force fumbles in there as well. This is a very good football player. 
and rightfully getting some recognition as a first team preseason All-American. Nicholas Johnson is also in here as well. His Western Illinois Leverbacks, they have struggled throughout this series, but Nicholas Johnson has been a bright spot for sure. He ends up with a breakout season last year, 14 sacks in his sophomore campaign. We'll see if he can reach double digit sacks here once again. In the interior defensive line, we got sophomore Matt Dixon at six foot four, 283 pounds. Dixon in his true freshman campaign, generated a lot of pressure up front he had nine sacks and also four forced fumbles as well he knows how to stop the run in the pass coming in at the other defensive line position we got ryan simmons v jr from chattanooga at six foot two 319 pounds he also had a little bit of a breakout season himself 14 sacks from the interior which is really amazing to think about this is someone that does get double teamed a little bit more often between the center and the guard and in spite of that still able to generate this amount of pressure also somehow manages up to pick up an interception you know nothing like those big boy touchdowns or big boy interceptions uh since they're not known for having the best hands necessarily moving on to your linebackers we got Tavita Bean who played in that national championship game last season he ended up with 19 sacks last year and eight forced fumbles this is a guy that has a nose for the football he knows how to get to it he's even got a few fumble recoveries also at linebacker is Matt King who made the All-American list as a true freshman last year. He's going to have some high expectations on him this upcoming season as Matt King did end up doing a little bit of everything. Nearly 100 tackles last year, 9 sacks, 3 interceptions, 6 forced fumbles, 4 fumble recoveries. This dude can play. It's just that simple. He is a very good football player. Uh, I don't know if he'll get that NFL opportunity, but he's making the most of his college one. And then at outside linebacker, we got Anthony McConnell rounding out the linebackers group. Representing for Oral Roberts University, he ends up ending his sophomore campaign, also nearly with 100 tackles, 6 sacks, 3 interceptions, 4 forced fumbles, 2 fumble recoveries. He is going to be a menace, especially when it comes to, you know, neutralizing that run game for opposing offenses. And then rounding out the defensive side of the football here in on the first team All-American list, we have Tim Blunt, the senior red shirt out of Idaho. He is playing his final year of college football this year. Marcus Riley is here as well. The sophomore red shirt uh, represents for Eastern Carolina. Garrett Reed, a true junior from New Mexico State. He will be the defensive leader of this team. Uh, he's going to be getting that first team nod at the free safety position. And then finally at strong safety, we got the true junior Stephen Green of Texas Southern. Last year in his sophomore campaign, he was able to get four interceptions, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. We'll see if he can get to at least five interceptions here in the 12 game, 11 to 12 games that Texas Southern will be playing due to those NCAA sanctions. Finally, for the, your specialist, we'll see Brian Marshall get that first team nod. He was a true freshman last year and comes with high expectations. Had a 94% field goal percentage and a long of 50 yards, so he has a great range for a college kicker. And then Mark Carter is in here as well. He's a junior from Idaho. Moving on to the second team All-American list, we got Joey Ward, who is also on that highest spin finalist list initially, so we'll definitely watch out for him. At running back, though, we got Kyle Anderson uh, for the second team All-American list. He had a very strong season last year. 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns on the ground. Also tacked on three catches for 30 yards uh, in addition to that. Plus, we'll also see Kenny Robinson, who is also on that Heisman finalist list. He is, of course, a senior from the Kent State Golden Flashes. Then we move into our second team group. We start with Ricky Pino, who was a very strong player in this freshman campaign. Uh, 92 catches, 100, 1,185 yards, 14 touchdowns as well. Very good for his freshman year, but he does need to cut on the drops. He did have six drops in his freshman campaign. We do see another custom player on the All-American list, though. It's Ralph Rags. The junior from Eastern Illinois, he was very hard to stop, especially when he got into the playoffs. He had a 
field day against that Yale secondary last year. He had 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 71 catches, which is a huge improvement compared to what he did in his freshman year. We do have a tight end from South Dakota State in there. Now, South Dakota State has disappointed so far in this series, but John White was pretty good in his true freshman year. He was a huge receiving threat. You don't see tight ends go nearly a thousand yards, but you can see why. Six foot eight, 250 pounds, and has the ability to run routes. You know, that I'm surprised that, you know, he is not a first team all american uh at least on this preseason list but he can certainly earn that later on dude had 950 yards and six touchdowns um next we have your offensive line we start with jason noah the sophomore from georgia southern we saw him in the national championship game last year uh blocking for ikeda woods then we got sean hickman the sophomore center from North Dakota State. He, I believe, won that Remington Award last year. Yes, he did. He is a Remington Award winner, and he had 26 pancakes for and not allowed a single sack last year. Also on the offensive line is Ronaldo White. He is a sophomore from the Rise Owls, a very big man as well, six foot seven, 350 pounds. Uh, no longer uh, that Robert Johnson had some running lanes uh, in there deep FCS playoff run last season he has now of course graduated then we have Keith Payne the junior right tackle from James Madison the junior last season had a really good year 94 pancakes and even though they run a very heavy uh, passing attack there at James Madison dude only allowed four sacks as well so this is a very strong offensive lineman that the Dukes have and then rounding out the offensive side of the ball for the second team All-Americans we got Ben Subar, the junior from North Dakota State. He had, at six foot four, he had 91 pancakes and only allowed one sack last season. Moving on to the defensive side of the football, we go to start out with John Gunn, the sophomore from Montana in his freshman campaign. He ends up with 13 sacks last year, a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. So this is somebody that can really get to the quarterback and still has a lot of untapped potential as well. For the other defensive lineman, Kyle McDonald, who started in the national championship is here. He ends up with double digit sacks. He'll look to repeat that here in his junior campaign. After that, if we go to the interior of the defensive line. Ob Obadiah Church is here, six foot six, 295 pounds. The Texas State product had seven sacks in his freshman campaign. It was also able to uh, force multiple force fumbles uh, in that interior defensive line. As for the other defensive lineman that we will see, Patrick Williams is in here. So that's two defensive linemen from Southern Missouri State. Might have to catch a couple of Bears games. I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the comments. This is a guy though had double digit sacks in his freshman campaign and was also able to recover a fumble. Up next, we have the linebackers, and we have another second team All-American. From South Dakota State, it's Michael Sims, the true sophomore. He ends up with over 100 tackles last year, 12 sacks, so he was a menace to opposing quarterbacks. Done a little bit of everything, too. Interception, got a forced fumble, fumble recovery, but this is someone that specializes in stopping the run. Also at linebacker, we got the only All-American that we've seen from Montana State so far, Jared Landrum. He is a junior uh, at middle linebacker and a good sophomore year. Seven sacks, five interceptions, also forced five fumbles over the course of the season. One of them that he did recover himself. Jared Landrum, of course, is a very good linebacker that I'm sure we'll see in some Big Sky Conference action this upcoming season. And then rounding out the linebacker group, we got Terry Johnson, the junior from North Carolina A&T State. Terry Johnson in his sophomore campaign really stepped things up for the most part. Less interceptions than last year, but everything is el else is on an upward trajectory. He had more tackles, more sacks, more forced fumbles, and also recovered three fumbles last season. Finally, we move on to the secondary for the second team All-Americans, and we see multiple of your guys' customs. Now, I don't know how this happened. I don't do anything to influence who gets redshirted, who does not get redshirted, but somehow Otis Grip is listed as a freshman redshirt. Sure, that's a glitch. Uh, not that he 
would make it to his uh senior redshirt season he's already an 86 overall so i can definitely imagine him after year number five try to go either to the nfl or transfer up to the fbs level but it is just really interesting to, to see that uh considering he actually has stats from last year you know him as a punt and kick returner also in his list though is sophomore sean goodwin he is from the university of montana Sean Goodwin in his freshman campaign was a little bit of a ball hawk. He had five interceptions in his freshman year, also recovered multiple fumbles. Not to mention he has two defensive touchdowns to his name as well. Sean Goodwin is someone that definitely knows how to play. Also in here as well in the secondary is Justin Brown. He's a junior corner from Eastern Illinois. Justin Brown in his sophomore year really stepped up. He doubled the number of tackles that he ended up having. He's got a sack to his name and then also had four interceptions last year. Not to mention he was able to take one of those interceptions to the crib. And finally, rounding out the defensive side of the football here for the second team All-Americans, we got Ken Trill, the sophomore from Southeast Missouri State. This is also one of your guys' custom players out here, man. Uh, Ken Trill was really good his freshman year. Six interceptions forced fumble got a sack and he got a defensive touchdown too he took one of those to the crib part of a very talented southeast missouri state defense one of the best i think we'll see here in the country of course we have another secondary person i was not seeing this coming we got david benelli from james madison he started as a true freshman for the dukes last year and didn't look like a freshman at all he had 43 tackles in his freshman year, six interceptions, and a defensive touchdown. So he took one of those interceptions to the crib. Uh, David Vendelli could end up elevating himself to a first-team All-American. He has to be in that conversation. Finally, we now move to the kickers and punters that will be enshrined in that second team preseason All-American list. We got Jonathan Webb, the sophomore redshirt from North Dakota State. And then punting the football for the Youngstown State Penguins, it's Joel Langford, a senior red shirt, who is the final second team All-American on this list. Now, before I hopped into the custom prospect review, I did want to give a quick update on one of the custom coaches in this series. So, Dion Kirby spent the last three seasons in this series coaching for Morgan State. He ends up with a 10-23 and overall record. And that actually gets him fired. Now, luckily, he does end up on his feet. He lands at Rhode Island, who finished with a decent record last season, 5-6. and six. We'll see if Deion Kirby can right the ship here for the Rhode Island Rams and maybe someday lead them to an FCS playoff appearance. So we now go ahead and see what these custom players are going to be looking like this upcoming season. Now... All that being said, uh, some one disclaimer that I did want to throw out there right now. Uh, I know on the template that it does have, you know, your top three preferences. Uh, I did my best to try to get people to where they wanted to go originally. Uh, but with that, that being said, though, um, not everyone's going to get that. And the reason why that doesn't happen is, you know, the last thing that I want is for you guys to end up with some like 50 something overall player uh that person never ends up seeing the field in any capacity and that's just not fun that's just really not fun whatsoever so uh all that thought about and by the way uh ryan bush is gonna be the highest rated player here uh in this series for year number four he's a 94 overall and he's gonna be joined by a bunch of other you know 90 something overall starting to really see some serious talent come through but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the custom players that will be true freshmen here in year number four. So we start with the Florida A&M Roundwars. That is, we're going to start with the custom coaches that got some custom players to coach. We begin with IR Corner, the six foot three, 170 pound product. He is going to be listed as, you know, at least competing for that number two corner spot initially. Could start his freshman year. We'll see if he can beat out Paris Chase or not. He definitely has elite speed. So either way, we should see him on the field. Another freshman that will be on this Florida A&M team is Jacob Cool Beans. He is a freshman kicker. He is actually going to be redshirted though. 
uh, since Curtis Douglas, who is a second team all conference nominee, he is starting ahead of him. Moving on to the James Madison Dukes, we start at the running back position. We got Montrell Baxter. He is going to be redshirted in his freshman year. Going to be buried on that depth chart for the time being, but definitely some opportunities to eventually go ahead and work his way up the ranks. Um, should be able to at least eventually get an opportunity to see the field. Also coming to James Madison in his freshman year is Jose Pilo. He is going to be listed as the number three corner for James Madison, so could very well see him in nickel and dime situations this upcoming season, which uh, would be very exciting to see. He will be behind J.D. Stuckley and Adam Butler. Also kicking for James Madison, but will be redshirted, is Alexander Volomov. He's going to be an 80 overall, very good kicker, but he will be behind the senior redshirt, Kwane Dixon, who won the starting job in spring ball. Now, Coach Kirby will not be without some help in terms of custom players. He will have a really good freshman running back who will be starting right away. DJ Penny, six foot, 224 pounds. He's somebody that will be seeing some action very early on in his college career. Up next, we have Southeast Missouri State, which has five custom players joining the squad this season. We start at the fullback position, got three fullbacks on the team. Joshua Taylor is one of them. He is going to start right away for the Red Hawks. He'll be wearing number 43 this upcoming season. And then also on the squad is Jeff Jefferson, the, the 15th. He will also be playing that fullback position as well. However, he will be ups uh, not upset, but redshirted this upcoming season. On the offensive line, we got Bobby Wright, a true freshman wearing number 68 this season. He was trying to push Warren Ingram in spring ball, but the second team all-conference nominee will be able to keep his job as of right now. That being said, Bobby Wright will not be redshirted. He's just too good to not play this upcoming season. And finally, at the cornerback position, we got Ro Rocket Hendricks, who will be playing corner for Southeast Missouri State. He will be listed as the number six corner and wearing number eight this year. Could be someone that might see the field sparingly, depending on what happens in terms of injuries and suspensions. At Western Carolina, we will see three true freshman B custom players this season. We start with Brian Kahn, who will be listed as the number four wide receiver as of right now, but can easily work his way up to number two. He has seriously elite speed and will be wearing 86 this upcoming season. Also on the squad as well, but buried on the depth chart temporarily, is Mohamed El Bassa. He is going to be wearing number 87 this season but will be listed as the number six wide receiver on the Catamounts depth chart. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the football, Corey Hopkins will be playing left outside linebacker for the Catamounts. He's going to be listed at 80 overall and could easily see the field his freshman season. But now we go to the non-custom coached squads now, and we look through the rest of the FCS landscape. We start in Arkansas Pine Bluff where we'll find... Paul J. Forte, who looks to be the eventual successor for Doug Rose. Uh, Paul Forte will start as the number three running back. Could easily get redshirt this upcoming season, uh, but he will eventually get that starting spot if he does remain patient. Up next, we got Chattano the Chattanooga Mox, who's got a couple of custom players themselves. Starting at side end, they got Marco Walker wearing number 86 this upcoming season. Already going to be expected to produce as he is listed as the starter for Chattanooga Mox. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the football, we'll see Logan Maya sign with Chattanooga as well. Someone that could see early playing time as he is listed as the number three outside linebacker on the Chattanooga depth chart. Should see some spare playing time over the course of the season. Meanwhile, and running back for Delaware, we actually see three custom guys for a team that made a surprise playoff appearance last year. Among the eight freshman running backs that are on this Delaware squad, we start with Philbert Burt, who will be wearing number 45 this season. Tyler T. Creator, he's also going to be a true freshman and wearing number 29. 
they will compete for each other for the number four running back spot. And then sitting at number six, we actually have Queen Mary, a true freshman that will be wearing number nine this upcoming season. Up next, we have the Denver Pioneers, who were able to get themselves a pretty solid custom player. Leon Rose, the six foot one, 240 pound player, wearing number 80 this season. Mo the most athletic of the tight ends on this Denver football team. He is someone that could see sparing playing time this season. Moving on now, we got a few custom players on Eastern Illinois squad. And there was a lot of freshmen that were brought in in light of, you know, not a lot of returning talent at the position. So with that being said, a couple of custom guys did make it onto the Eastern Illinois roster. We got Joseph Whittle, who will be listed as the number four player and will be wearing number 18 this season, as well as King William wearing number 17. And just the amount of freshmen that are on this team right now, I would not be shocked if either of them ended up transferring after this season but one person that should actually see the field among the customs on this eastern illinois squad we got phoenix firebird at, standing at five foot eleven he is going to be listed as the number four wide receiver this upcoming season for the eastern illinois panthers moving on to the quarterback position for eastern kentucky we got joe yamasaki the true freshman who's got good size and good athleticism as well, 6'4", 206 pounds. However, it looks like he will probably get registered as well as he sits as number five on the quarterback depth chart. Also on this Eastern Kentucky offense and signing on the dotted line is Sheldon Franklin, the true freshman at fullback. He will be listed as the backup fullback this upcoming season and wearing number 33. Up next, we have the... Furman Paladins, who do have a couple of custom recruits. We start with the true freshman, Kyler Williams. He's going to be wearing number eight this upcoming season and could see the field early. The most athletic among the wide receivers on this team. He's listed as the number three wide receiver. The other custom that is on the Furman Paladins as a true freshman is Braylon Davis wearing number seven this upcoming season. He's the number four corner for Furman and could see a little bit of playing time as well in his freshman year. But now we go to the national runner up last year, Georgia Southern, who ends up having four custom guys. We start with Jeff Boston, who's going to be listed as the number three running back. He's going to have a similar role that Joseph I. Krakowski has, someone that you know maybe comes in in garbage time his freshman year you know get a little bit experience that way but someone that will most likely get registered though is aj jackson he's going to be the number five running back on this depth chart also seeming to be buried on the depth chart as well is andrew bird who's the number five tackle on this georgia Southern squad he's a 74 overall and will also wear 74 finally at corner for georgia southern we got marquise lewis he is a true freshman wearing number four got really good speed at 94 speed and is listed as the number three corner because of that after that we got grambling state who also ends up with three custom players one of them is going to be the true freshman ray waddle who actually wins the job in camp from Octavian Kador. Now Octavian Kador, he was high, he was sitting behind Joe Overstreet and thought this was his year, but then Grambling State brings in a big time five-star quarterback, Ray Waddle. He's an 80 overall, and he's gonna start right away. So congratulations to Ray Waddle, but tough break at the same time for Octavian Cater. Also, a part of this custom player class is Dejuan Grapple. And if I butchered that, I apologize. Uh, Dejuan is going to wear number 82 this upcoming season and will be listed as number three receiver for the Grambling State Tigers. Rounding out the custom players for Grambling State, though, is Bean Emerson. Going to be wearing number 20 this upcoming season and with serious speed to work with, but is certainly raw. He will be starting for Grambling State. Going to be some growing pains here for the young safety as his awareness is only a 48, but the talent is undeniable. Up next, we have Jackson State, the uh, current home of Deion Sanders. 
And Jackson, or Jackson State's got a couple of custom guys themselves. At quarterback, we got Bridge Manning, who is going to be wearing number 17 this season. But will be seen as the backup quarterback, so could see some uh, playing time every once in a while. Uh, Ryan Morris still hangs on to his starting quarterback job. And then at corner, we got Rocky Franklin Jr. He is a custom guy, just could not fit you know, that YT at the end. But he looks like he will be competing for a sp starting spot early for Jackson State. Moving on now to Mississippi Valley State, we got Michael Fisher, who will be punting for the Delta Devils this season. You know, going to be a starter right away. And one of the least exciting parts of football, seeing a man punt, unless you're part of the brand as Pat McAfee would always say. So that takes us to Montana now, and Montana, they signed a really strong class uh, for those of you that watched the offseason episode, but we do see someone potentially be starting right away for the Montana Grizzlies. We got Jamison Skinner at starting, potentially the starting quarterback, QB1 at Montana. I, I don't know, but he's going to be wearing number 10. Uh, we'll have to watch that unfold. Uh, he w is competing actively with Mark Folden. It could be something that we might not see resolve, you know, here in these first couple weeks of the season. At running back, we see the number one player in high school football last year be the number one on Montana. He's going to be wearing that number one, but he's going to be the backup running back this upcoming season. He will be backing up junior tailback Braylon Hurst, who's a first-team all-conference nominee. Mario Matthews, though, has got a ton of talent. He's going to be someone that's going to be an All-American one day here at the FCS level. At fullback, we got Hohan Rumanij, who is going to be listed as the starting fullback at Montana this season. He will be wearing number 43 for the Grizzlies. Meanwhile, keeping up with all the insane talent that Montana has, Diego Figo is going to be the number one defensive tackle. He will be starting right away for the Grizzlies. He's an 84 overall, and he's going to be wearing number 92 this upcoming season. And finally, at corner, we got yet another extremely talented freshman, Henry Wells, who will be wearing number three this season. He could be the number two quarterback between him and Chris Lloyd, but that 99 speed, even if he's not starting on the defensive side of the ball, that is going to be insanely hard to keep off the field. He better not be redshirted. So New Hampshire got a couple of custom players, and they both end up being these high-profile freshmen that are competing for the starting quarterback job. But one person had to prevail, and it's going to be Bruno Baggio, who will be the heir apparent to Carlos Montoya, who is now out to the NFL, 84 overall. He's got 80, 72 speed. He is going to have a really... We're going to see some growing pains. 59 awareness. He might not make the best decision, but the arm talent is certainly there. Someone that also has the arm talent and the athleticism, so we might see him in his true freshman year too. Jason Dubois, the true freshman, going to be wearing number 15. He's got 87 speed. Uh, I would not be shocked to see Jason Dubois transfer because he's too good to be a you know, permanent backup quarterback, which would be the case since I could easily see Bruno Baggio being a guy that you know starts all four years if he doesn't leave for the NFL early. So, you know, something to definitely monitor, but they're both insanely talented people. We now move on to North Dakota State, where there is a couple of your custom guys as well, one of which has a very recognizable name jerry rice the third he's going to be playing for north dakota state he is going to be a looks like the number two wide receiver potential he's going to fight with fellow custom uh john weeks for that number two slot but you know someone that you know we know jerry weiss very connected to mississippi valley state uh mississippi valley state not in a great state right now so going to north dakota state in order to get more exposure um as potential nfl prospect also on this North Dakota State football team, we got the outside linebacker, Bam Bam Samuel. He's going to be fighting for that number two corner spot. A very crowded outside linebacker room. Uh, Clayton Lewis is in here as well. He's a fellow custom. Anthony McNeil, Don Cooper is in here. Uh, Bam Bam, he's going to try to come in here and 
let it know how he is you know he might see the field as freshman year maybe not but he's very talented nonetheless um next we have northern arizona where there's a couple of custom guys here as well we start on the offensive side of the ball we got one michael wilkes a true freshman standing at six foot 195 pounds listed at number three on the depth chart he's going to be wearing number 25 this upcoming season however another custom on this northern arizona squad that will be starting right away is the true freshman charles hearse he's gonna be wearing number 59 this upcoming season and has a lot of range 84 speed uh he's a little undersized though 5 foot 11 237 pounds the talent is undeniable and he's very strong he will be starting for the lumberjacks this season at northwestern state we see jeremiah hoodie playing the quarterback position for the Northwestern State Demons. He will try to compete for a starting job, but it looks like the edge will still go to Matt Lewis, who does have that more uh, experience and more awareness of, of the offense and how it works. Jeremiah Hoodie will be the backup, but could see playing time if there's garbage duty opportunities or if the starter ends up getting hurt. Also playing that quarterback position among the custom players, we got Nathan Thomas, He's going to be a 78 overall guy. He is actually the OG tier custom uh, custom winner, but there was no uh, 80 overall plus guys left. But So this is the best available player. Uh, Nathan Thomas will be competing for the starting job. He will be sitting behind Justin Wright because he is an impact player, but some of that could eventually start for Prairie View A&M. However, another custom on the Prairie View A&M squad that will be playing right away is Gary Klaus, a kicker. He will be kicking for Prairie View A&M and will look to be their starter for the next four years. Keeping up with the trends at quarterback, though, we now got James Madison, the player. There was a guy named after the University of James Madison, as well as, more importantly, one of the presidents of the United States. One of the first presidents of the United States that we've had. I believe he was the second president uh, that, that we had, uh, but he is going to be the backup quarterback initially. For the Princeton Tigers, he will be sitting behind the first team all-conference nominee, DeMarco Wilson, one of the best quarterbacks in the Ivy League. Also garnering the role of backup quarterback, we got Eric Pierpoint at 6'4", 205 pounds. He will be sitting behind the incumbent starter, Carlos McDougal. Uh, should see him on the field, and he is insanely athletic, so I can't wait to see what he does with the football on his hands could get in at other positions uh maybe at wide receiver or something so in light of trent williams transferring they did bring in another middle linebacker it's luigi baggio he is the brother of bruno baggio who's playing quarterback at new hampshire he's going to be buried on the depth chart here though in spite of his talent he's listed number three on the depth chart and he's going to be wearing number 46 this upcoming season Meanwhile, in the defensive backfield, we got Jose Carlo Josea. Now, that is one heck of a name. I might rock with the JCH. You know, let me know if you rock with that nickname in the comment section. But JCH, man, he is very fast. He's got 93 speed, but it's got to work on his awareness. That's why he's number five on the depth chart. Keeping up with the trend at quarterbacks, we see Duar McNair who is going to be the backup quarterback here at Sacramento State. This is what Tyler Murray was prior to him transferring over to Northern Arizona. Uh, Corey Hall here is still the starter, but in a couple years from now, we might be looking at McNair as the starting quarterback of the Sacramento State Hornets. But one custom guy at Sacramento State that will be starting right away is Tama Masca, the true freshman standing at six foot, 183 pounds. He is going to be wearing number 18 this season, and he's going to get the nod as the starting number two corner for Sacramento State. Speaking of quarterbacks, though, we now go to those cardiac cats over at Sam Houston State, where we'll find yet another custom player. We got Jet Lee, the true freshman standing at 6'2", 194 pounds. He'll be wearing number 13 while at Sam Houston State, and it's going to be listed at number four on the quarterback depth chart with chances to possibly move at up to a backup quarterback opportunity. Over at Sanford, though, we have two more custom guys. On the offensive side of the ball, we have Braden Bell, a YouTube submission who will be number five on the 
depth chart here for the Sanford Bulldogs as they will, you know, try to make their first FCS playoff appearance. But the guy to watch out for among the custom players, though, is Hans Wofford, uh, the same family that helped founded Wofford all those years ago. He's not going to play for the Wofford. He's going to spread his wings out a little bit. He's going to go play for Sanford and will actually start right away for Sanford. So it's going to be a huge boost for the Bulldogs there um, as he's going to wear number 66 this upcoming season. Up next, we go to the Southeastern Lions, who are also seeking their first FCS playoff appearance. Here we'll find a couple of custom guys here as we have Nadali Friday. He's going to be listed as a number five wide receiver. Good slot receiver potential, uh, but is going to maybe be redshirted or very sparingly see the field in his true freshman campaign. It is a young but talented wide receiver room here at Southeastern Louisiana University. But this freshman tight end might see the field a little bit more as he is listed as the backup tight end. We got Paxton Grove wearing that number 84. He's one of four freshmen that are on this tight end list, but he is one of the best. Uh, actually, he is the best freshman tight end that Southeast Louisiana has. After that, we have the Southern Jaguars who also have a couple of custom guys. We got Flair McNair wearing number 10. He will be sitting behind the former number one recruit in all of high school football way back in that year one offseason, Justin Jones, which by the way, Justin Jones with the graduation of Mike Hill, he will now uh, be the starting quarterback for the Southern Jaguars and has a lot of playing experience playing at other positions in his first couple of years of eligibility. But Southern is a little bit thin at the wide receiver position this season. So that opens up an opportunity for another YouTube submission. Trey Woods, who's a 68 overall, but he could be the number three wide receiver this upcoming season. You know, so outside of guys like Chris Britton and Chase Walter, who did come in with Justin Jones, some of these wide receivers are going to have to step up in order for Southern to have a successful season. Speaking of that passing game, though, we do have another quarterback going to Tennessee State. We got Lucky Cannon, who's going to be wearing number 17 this upcoming season and will be listed at number three on the depth chart as of right now, but could eventually work himself as a starter, uh, maybe in his senior year or as a redshirt junior, depending on if he actually does get redshirted or not. Meanwhile, over at Tennessee Tech, they added a couple of custom players. Uh, actually, no, they only had uh, Kajon Harley uh, as a custom player. Uh, he will be at the bottom of their defensive line depth chart, but could be someone that sees uh, some garbage time depending on uh, how suspensions and injuries work out. Still a talented player, though. The person that I thought was going to Texas Tech but actually goes to Tennessee State in instead, though, is Bruiser Buchanan. He's going to be wearing number 45 this upcoming season and is starting at left outside linebacker for the Tennessee State Tigers as they look to uh, get back to the FCS playoffs. Uh, they've only made one FCS playoff appearance so far in this series. At Texas Southern, they do also add a custom player by the name of Jay Balmer. He is going to be wearing number 82 and is already going to be the backup tight end here for Texas Southern. Sitting behind Dan Griffin, who, to be fair, does have serious NFL potential. So one thing that the Citadel likes to do is run the football. So this is a great landing spot for Talon Fullerton, who not only goes to a run-heavy offense, but he gets a chance to potentially start right away uh, in a tight battle with Tom Lopez, who is listed as a true sophomore. We'll see how much Talon Fullerton sees the field this upcoming season. He will be wearing number 24. That being said, the Towson Tigers got themselves a big time player in spite of not having any FCS playoff appearances. Diego Romero, he's going to be an 80 overall tight end. One of the best players on this roster already, but sits behind a senior redshirt, Stefan Duran, who is, you know, an 84. So he's a little bit better. Uh, Diego Romero, though, he should be able to start for at least three of the four seasons. And he's someone uh, that could see the field right now on top of that. He will wear 88 this season. So that takes us now to the Yale Bulldogs as we're starting to round up our custom player reveal. 
we go to the quarterback position where Shadow Stance is with the Yale Bulldogs. He's going to be listed as a 70 overall. And while buried on the depth chart right now, he could eventually be the starter as all of the guys ahead of him right now are juniors and, and seniors, with the exception being David Whitlock. Finally, we have Youngstown State who has three custom guys, but first I want to talk about a custom that's already uh, been in the FCS series, Osiah Jackson Jr., who is elevated to the starting quarterback opportunity now. There is going to be a couple of guys behind him, though, that are new customs that will compete for the backup quarterback job. David Wilson, who will be wearing number seven this season. He's more of a pocket passer. And Brandon Westbrook, who is more of a scrambling quarterback. We'll see how that backup quarterback battle plays out uh, throughout the course of the season. But one freshman custom that will be starting right away for the Youngstown State Penguins is Vinny Bennett, who will be wearing that number 40 while he's here at Youngstown State. He does get to start right away playing over fellow freshman John Moss and Bob Ward. So now that we have all the custom prospects revealed, we took a look at the preseason polls and the preseason All-Americans to watch out for. Let's go ahead and now take a look at the games that we will show here in week number one. And we will have five games to watch out for in that episode. We'll start with the very first game of the season, the 1230 kickoff, where we will see Norfolk State go on the road to play against the number four ranked North Dakota State Bison. And North Dakota State should be a heavy favorite, but they got a new quarterback. We'll see how he runs this offense in his fir very first collegiate start here at the FCS level. After that, we will check in on the second game of the episode where we have Morgan State, who is now starting life after Dion Kirby, who, you know, initially had some hope, but, you know, that rough year number three uh, caused him to be fired. Their first game will be on the road against number 17 ranked Eastern Illinois, who is replacing their starting quarterback as well, but they are a team that did make it to the FCS playoffs last year, uh, and they're a decent squad. They could be a team that comes back to the FCS playoffs. It has to start with winning this game, though. They cannot lose one to Morgan State. And then of the last of the telev nationally televised game, we actually will have number one Georgia Southern, led by Ikeda Woods. They will have their matchup once again against the University of Central Florida. Now, Central Florida did beat Georgia Southern back in year number two, but Georgia Southern provided the favor back to them in last season's iteration of this matchup. This is going to be considered a game of the week, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of eyes on Ikeda Woods now that he doesn't have his favorite running back, Albert Miniachi, in the backfield, who did go to the NFL. So on top of FCS games that will get some national attention, we'll go ahead and also check in on a couple of FCS versus FBS matchups for the very first time in this series since you know there's not a lot of games that typically happen in week number one we'll start with delaware state they're coming in on a four game losing streak and now they're gonna go on the road they're gonna go up into penn state and penn state we know is a very intimidating environment to go play in not to mention penn state they obviously have a far more talented football team so really interesting to see how delaware state handles it um, this could be a situation like we saw in year number one where they get blown out of the water. They might have a solid first quarter, but you know, we'll see what happens. This is definitely a game that I'm intrigued to see how they handle an FBS, not FBS, but power five environment. Another team that will be going on the road in a power five environment. And this will be the final game that we'll watch here in year number one. We got Northeastern who goes on the road. They will play up against Washington state. Now, Washington State is a little bit different since they don't have Mike Leach as their coach. Obviously, he is at Mississippi State, but Washington State, they're still a solid football team. They're a team that does go to bowl games as well. So Northeastern will have their hands full, but it will be a good learning experience as they can use those experiences to really benefit them when they play against teams that are, you know, closer to their caliber. So guys, that will wrap up the year number four preview, and I am really excited 
to get this season officially underway. I hope you guys are as well. And if you are, I need you guys to do me a massive favor. Smack that like button for me and then hit that subscribe button if you do happen to be brand new to the channel as well. This is John Shea Gaming on the mic, signing off and coming back with week number one action in the next episode. But with that, I hope you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.